<laughs> Thank you. Uh, ohayo gozaimasu. Thank you so much uh, to the organizers for having me here. I am presenting uh, an open source software tool. Uh, I am here on behalf of the, the commercial side of that company. Um, and I'll be talking about what we're doing to help doctors and researchers use uh, structured data practically as part of clinical and, and research. Okay, so clinical phenotype data is still mostly unstructured. A lot of clinics uh, and researchers use paper still. Uh, this is obviously not computable at all. Uh, increasingly, checklists and things like that make the information that's being collected more structured, but this is very restrictive. It's usually at a high, you know, very uh, large granularity, high level terms, uh, and they fall back to sort of other text boxes uh, for additional information. When we start collecting unstructured text, uh, this is not restrictive enough. Typos are very common. There are lots of ways of describing the same term. Uh, and sometimes things start getting into uh, very confusing and not necessarily interpretable uh, text after the fact. So we decided to take a different approach uh, to this. Uh, when we deal with structured phenotype data, this is very, very powerful for arriving at a diagnosis uh, for patients and families. Uh, there are lots of tools, including PubCase Finder, uh, for, for arriving at diagnosis suggestions based on a patient's uh, structured phenotype data. It also allows cases and information to be shared globally because the ontology is translated once and then everyone can see those cases in their native language. Uh, and there are APIs like PhenoPackets uh, for sharing that sort of data. There's genome analysis that uses the phenot structured phenotype data to do variant prioritization. Um, and there is discovery of similar cases based on phenotype and, and structured gene genetic information, such as through the matchmaker exchange. So the question that we asked was, how do we make using and collecting structured data practical for doctors? Uh, and one of the amazing resources in this space right now is the human phenotype ontology, which is an ontology for collecting these structured phenotypic uh, information organized hierarchically. Uh, it was created sort of as a nice merge between clinical expertise and technical expertise. Um, and so it ends up with a very powerful structure that allows these sorts of analyses to be much easier than they would be uh, if you were dealing with text, for instance. So the tool that we built to help doctors and researchers use the human phenotype ontology was started many years ago. It is called Phenotips. It is available uh, at phenotips.org. It is open source. You can download it um, and, and see the code for it. Um, it has a number of features to help support the clinician or researcher's workflow when they see the patient and want to record the patient's phenotypic information in a structured way. This includes predictive typo tolerance search backed by a leucine solar index uh, so that you get Google-like functionality. The clinician can then record uh, positive phenotypes that are observed in the patient and important negatives that are worthy uh, to note. There is a pedigree drawing tool built in, which includes carrier risk estimation. Uh, we can integrate with risk estimation tools to draw those risk scores uh, within the pedigree. Uh, there is measurement functionality, so that clinicians who are recording things like height, weight, head circumference, uh, we can chart that data over time. And if there is sufficiently abnormal measurements, we automatically add the corresponding structured term behind the scenes so that you can improve the differential uh, and get better gene suggestions from that. There is also concept recognition. Uh, here we plug in a variety of different tools depending on how it's configured, but we present these as suggestions to the clinician so that there is still that review as part of the process. Oftentimes, the textual information has information about family members or about pertinent negatives, and text mining tools tend not to be able to distinguish those cases, so we still include those as suggestions as part of the clinician's workflow, and then we are able to collect that information over time to improve, improve the training of the algorithms. 
uh, based on this structured phenotype and structured family history data, we're able to do things like suggest diagnoses. Uh, currently, we use a, an algorithm called BOCA uh, out of uh, Sebastian and a number of Peter Robinson's group, um, as well as suggest genes based on the patient, those HPO terms. Uh, right now, we use the curated annotations from the Human Phenotype Ontology and Monarch Initiative. Uh, there is an internationalization process for phenotypes. It is currently translated into Spanish and French. Uh, now that the human phenotype ontology is translated uh, into Japanese, thanks to Ogashima-san, um, we are working to translate phenotypes now as well so that it will be available uh, natively here. Uh, the overall phenotypes ecosystem, where is phenotypes being used right now? It is used at hospitals, uh, where it is integrated into health record systems. It is used at research clinics, um, who are oftentimes those cases may originally be seen at the hospital and then be de-identified and sent to a research system. Uh, there are national and international initiatives, usually for rare or undiagnosed patients uh, that use phenotypes. Uh, and then the matchmaking for unsolved cases, so Phenome Central is a node within the matchmaker exchange uh, for finding these similar cases, and that is built on top of phenotypes. Uh, right now, there are uh, over 130,000 patient records that have been uh, phenotyped using phenotypes, so this is the impact we are trying to make in terms of structuring phenotypic data for, for patients, uh, the over 4,000 specialists and over 100 instances around the world. Uh, this is a combination of open source instances and com enterprise instances at hospitals. So when we do this integration into hospital systems, this is some of the work that we do on the commercial side, uh, is integrating into these health record, electronic health record systems like Epic and Cerner, um, so that we, phenotypes can provide that workflow for genetics or genomic medicine within the hospital, which is not very well supported by those generalist uh, health record systems. And there we get to deal with wonderful APIs like HL7V2. And can I click the button here? Does this work? I have no idea what I just did. Hope that's okay. Sorry. <laughs> um, we can, in, including embedding directly into the electronic health record system so that it doesn't visually stand alone for the purpose of the clinician, right? A lot of what we're doing is trying to make this software practical so it fits into the clinician's workflow to make it as easy as possible for them to actually use this um, rather than just saying that we will collect all of this unstructured data and analyze it later. It's a very different approach um, and a complementary one. So once you have just, so there are also functionality built in and APIs built in to push cases between instances. Um, this allows de-identification of a clinical case so that the case can be shared with a research system uh, or shared into the matchmaker exchange so that it can then be participate in matchmaking uh, so that clinicians around the world can find other clinicians with similar cases. Uh, so the, this software is available. You can go to phenotypes.org. You can try it out. There is a, site, an, a public version that you should not enter real data into because everything is public. Uh, but you can also download it or look at the source code um, there. So thank you so much. Arigato gozaimasu. And yes, thank you. Thank you.